Lassane starts at 6'4", 210. He's a good leaper, but Weldon couldn't find him. Wide open, Lassane. Again, you're right. He's got that vertical leap. No pressure. Unless if anybody can get this thing, it's a 33-inch vertical jump. If he'd have had a 34-inch vertical jump, he might have caught it. Of course, Weldon, now Weldon hit the long one when he opened up the, the real long one, but he'd like that. That's what I mean about guys being serious. These guys, these second, third team offensive guys, just want to just, just rip their shirts off if they get so hungry and late in a game like this. Well, they want to see some stats in next year's media guide under their name. Dexter Carter escapes one tackle, still with balance inside the five to the four-yard line Carter. before James Latimer, a backup defensive lineman, got Latimer. him. Great Not balance the by the junior out of Baxley, Georgia, Dexter Carter. It's a nice average there, unless I'm uh, mistaken. That's uh, 816. That's uh, eight and a quarter, right? 8.25 a carry. Not bad. Well, he's known as the most finesseful, if you will, of the three tailbacks. Chris Parker, Sammy Smith, the others. This is something they need to work on. Now, it's a goal line offense, and this is something that they would, they've really not been good at this year. It is Carter. He got into the end zone, but there are two flags at least on the play. Pat Turner on the stop. Carter took a pretty hard hit at the goal line, but we'll check the flags. minutes and 47 seconds remaining and it appears to be against Florida State holding on the offense first down ball will go back to the 14 First and goal there. Bruce Lassane, bottom of your screen. Slot back, split backs behind the quarterback, Casey Wilden. Motion man is Dave Roberts. They're looking for Lassane, who has it at the three. They just cannot stop the 6'4 junior. Stefan Williams on the tackle. Nice hit at the end of this thing by Stephon Williams. It's that quick post again. Weldon's glued to him. Coming across, and he'll deliver the ball. But watch the blow by Stephon Williams. Ooh, good shot there. Good, good pass by Weldon. Now, Weldon's hungry for that touchdown pass. So they got 11 of the 14 back. It'll be second and goal after three. If they don't run that sweep again. A fake to Carter. And easily for the touchdown. Weldon. His first running touchdown of the year. In fact, it's his first running play. And Weldon into the end zone. That will make it 51 to nothing. Blocked by number 88. Great block on Stephon Williams at the corner. Now Weldon on, the, on just a naked boot here. He beats Taylor. But I don't know if you'll see him at the end of your picture. Watch number 88. He held this block. Lassane held that block for about five counts. And that was the difference in Weldon getting into the end zone. Wide receiver block. Good one. Richie Andrews stretching out his leg one more time tonight. He is seven for seven. And with 11.46 remaining in the game, Florida State is absolutely hammering South Carolina. 52 to nothing. Seminoles. We're not a company. But outstanding people come to us everywhere. Is Todd Ellis still the quarterback? <laughs> Talking to Al Gro, his offensive coordinator, before coming back on to the field. Todd Ellis tonight, 7 for 18 for just 67 yards. No TDs, of course, and two interceptions. 11 interceptions in his last four games he has suffered. Give this to the first man through, Harold Green. Green will be back next year. Todd Ellis will be back next year. Mike Dingle, a sophomore, will. Fullback Keith Bing will be graduated. 
And they got some young talent on that offensive line. Ike Harris is a sophomore. So is Calvin Stevens, Mark Fryer, a junior. Randy Harwell and Paul Shivers will not be back. Second down and eight. Ellis out to the left side for Keith Bing, his fullback. Corey and Freeman on the stop. Life of a defensive coordinator, Joe Lee Dunn. Last week, he was being called a genius for stuff in NC State. This week, most points he's ever given up, or at least South Carolina has ever given up, while he's been the defensive coordinator. Previous high, 34, Georgia Tech, but they ran two back for touchdowns on interceptions. So tonight has been a, a rather ugly affair for Joe Lee. First down at the 34. Harold Green with the pitch. And coming up to make the play on him was Kirk Carruthers, 45, a reserve inside linebacker, James Cheney, who backs up Odell Haggins at nose guard, also in on the stop. So the clock keeps running with 10-20 remaining in the football game. Pretty good secondary members there, Deion Sanders. You saw Dedrick Dodge next to him. Yeah, Dion always knows when the cameras are on. It's a nice mustache he's got there, too, all trim. Wonder what he wore to the ballpark tonight. He's a pretty snappy dresser. This one is headed for George Rush. Out to the left side. You're wondered by Tommy Henry, a freshman. Excuse me, Bobby. If you're wondering about the most points ever scored against South Carolina, way back in 1920, way back there, it was the Naval Academy. Next week's opponent, 63 points. That is as yet not in jeopardy. Well, Florida State's had 56 against them twice. 52 tonight. 52 unanswered. They're down in seven with just under 10 minutes remaining. They still had time to get off the snap, according Dead to the ball. clock. Ball start. Yeah, man. Chris, Chris talked a little bit ago about the uh, press guides. SIDs in these programs, both of them are excellent. As you see Joe Morrison, SID is a big part of any program, and uh, Kerry Tharp here at South Carolina and Wayne Hogan at Florida State did a great job helping us prepare. Believe it or not, we don't do all this on our own. At least I don't, Bobby, do you? Some of it. Some? Yeah. <laughs> no, those guys are great. Yeah, they did a great job. Sports information directors, where would we be without them? And I know our producer, Freddie Goodelli, feels the same. They don't just help the announcers, they have all of us. Third and 12 at the 32. Keith Bing, the fullback, with the carry. There's a happy bunch of cheerleaders. Well, maybe they'll get a chance to be number one. That's a crazy scenario when you think about number one, that all of the different things that could happen. And Notre Dame playing USC, that really makes for an interesting uh, bunch of possibilities. Rodney Price, nice high kick again. Deion Sanders, that is 28. Unable to get untracked in the return department tonight. So the ball changes hands. We'll take a timeout. 9.07 left. 52 nothing. Florida State. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah, too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. What are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> you really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. For lunch, the Porsche 944 Turbo generally prefers Ferraris. Although it has been known occasionally to snack on Corvettes.
ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Los Angeles Raiders and San Diego Chargers go head-to-head. -head. Marcus Allen spearheads the Raiders' double-barreled silver and black attack. The Chargers brace themselves for the collision with their AFC West division rival. The Los Angeles Raiders and San Diego Chargers battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Welcome back to Columbia. Bob Carpenter with Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler. 52-0, and there is Brad Johnson, a 6'6 freshman quarterback who also plays on the Seminoles basketball team. A rather wobbly effort, but complete to Tom O'Malley. Brad Johnson is out of Black Mountain, North Carolina. He's passed on the year 11 times now, completed seven, has thrown for a touchdown. 56 points, as we mentioned earlier a couple of years ago. They've given up 56 in this series twice, South Carolina has, to Florida State. So it appears the Seminoles will go to 12-3 and three in this series that started back in 1966. a senior tailback who has seen some action on the kickoff return team. South Carolina coming into this game fifth nationally in points per game 11.8 seventh nationally in total yardage 258 plus almost 259 yards. I don't even want to think about those averages now. They just doubled their points average. Almost. First man through is 30 two for Florida State. That's Paul Moore, a freshman fullback out of Miami. Down to the sidelines. Here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob. Florida State's new quarterback, Brad Johnson, also a very good basketball player. He started 15 games for the Seminoles, an excellent three-point shooter. They tell me when he visited Florida State on his recruiting trip, he ate the chicken fingers at training table prepared by Miss Betty. He loved them so much. That was one of the reasons why he chose to come to Tallahassee for whatever that's worth, Bob. That's why we came to do the game was Miss Betty's chicken fingers, wasn't it? Whatever it takes to get him out of Black Mountain, North Carolina, huh? Second and six at the 45. The pitch to the deep man, Keith Ross. Some sticking going on as he gets a first down near the 35-yard line of South Carolina. Following our game tonight, Bill Patrick and Charlie Steiner will be standing by at Sports Center. They'll bring you up to date on the top 20 football action and the rest of the day in sports. And then after that, it'll be Danny Jackson throwing the 20-game winner for the Major League Baseball All-Star team touring Japan. John Miller and Don Sutton call the action for you tonight. Live at 11.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. First down at the 35 of South Carolina. Into the belly of the first man through. Then again is the fullback, Paul Moore. There's running it down the middle of the field, Florida State. Bobby Bowden may have given Brad Johnson his one completion, and now it's just time to run the football. I don't know. I would, I'd be amazed if they quit throwing the ball. Here's your misery index. And this is the most miserable of misery indexes that I have seen this year. Four turnovers, two sacks allowed, which really isn't too bad considering drop passes, seven for 65, and one block punt, and 52 to nothing ought to be on there. That is miserable. A keeper on second and two. Where's this rainbow going to land? Intercepted. Number 23 for South Carolina is Dale Campbell, the defensive back. That's his second picked off of the year. He earlier had one for a touchdown. So South Carolina gets a turnover and gets back the football. Well, Miss Betty's chicken fingers won't help him on this play. This looks like one of his three-point shots. Good pressure. And then a balloon and Campbell just backing up, backing up, makes the interception tomorrow. Victory, little else for South Carolina, but they're still playing defense, and you've got to give them credit for that. No starts. 
Where does Chris come up with all this good stuff? I think he should be on more. I think he's been in most of those restaurants and dorm uh, food <laughs> places himself. That's how he knows. This Betty's chicken fingers, huh? That's what he does between Saturdays. <laughs> First down at the night. You never see him until we get to the town where we're going, right? <laughs> Fumble on the play, and Florida State gets it right back. And we ought to punch up that misery index again and add that one to it. That is, what a night. That is Joe Ostazuski. You were hoping he wouldn't get in the game. I know you were, right? Oh, I can handle names like that. It was all right. Well, it's just gone this way all night for South Carolina. It's just, this is one of these things where you're just watching the clock, hoping the thing's going to be over. Dingle never had it. Ellis hit him in the chest and that lower part of the shoulder pads with it in a plastic plate. It bounced loose and what was his name? Ostazuski caught it. You got it. I can do those too. First down at the 13. Keith Ross. Helmets clash at the 10. Mike Tolbert in on the tackle. So is Mike Conway, a defensive back in the ball game here late. Clock continues to run down to the 525 mark. And beyond, 52 to nothing, Florida State. What a night for Peter Tom Willis, the junior quarterback, replacing the injured Chip Ferguson and engineering a seminal route. And Kevin, we really need to go back and tell folks what a tough place this can be to play for a visiting team. We saw the opening ceremonies, and it's not just the crowd, but South Carolina, a very fine, proud football program. This just does not happen to them at home. No, well, it's only the first, it's the first time since 1967, if the score stands, that they've been shut out twice in the same season. And, of course, Georgia Tech did it. That was an unbelievable surprise, and this is a major surprise, too. Certainly the score is. Movement on the right side. Seminoles had number 89 over on that right side. Check it looked like 88. Bruce Lassane and the artist Woodard came across the line. Well, when you think about 75,000 people here, and, and you're right about the opening ceremonies, that pass by Willis, that first pass and the block punt, it took the crowd out of it, and it just, that was it. The game was over right then, and it, really, they haven't let up since. Looked like it was Dave Roberts, the tight end on the right side, the man who moved on the play. It'll be third and one at the five. He's lost. Clotheslined inside the five. David Taylor with a big hit. From the right end oh, position, oh, 42. Oh. He's still coming off an ankle injury, had not played in four weeks up until the North Carolina State game. Good quickness he has out on the corner. And with 4.13 remaining, it'll be inside the five on a fourth and one. I think it'd be a nice gesture to punt here. Which direction? <laughs> yeah, right. <That's> right. <laughs> That'd be a better gesture, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I, this is where I would drop kick it and go for the three. There's no pressure. But there's a first down. And maybe a touchdown. Paul Moore, the fullback, just simply refusing to give up as he fights into the end zone. And it's 58 to nothing. And that's a new high point for this series in terms of points scored by one team. Well, here, here's one of those guys I was talking about. Paul Moore, he wants to show him what he can do, and what he can do is carry three, a couple of four guys into the end zone with the ball. They don't know what the score is, and again, that's a problem when you're getting hammered. Now it's 59 to nothing. Four minutes and seven seconds remaining. Florida State unreal tonight. I'm supporting Ed Booth. Ed's been a judge. He's fair. He's been a judge before. He knows how to make the hard decision. The circuit court rules on everything from divorces to capital punishment cases. We need a person with Ed Booth's tested experience. 
He's fair, and he knows how to make the hard decisions. Ed Booth for circuit judge, for a judge with experience. Power Hour. The most exciting program you'll ever see is coming to your city. Power Hour. Somewhere in a distant time and place, seven men would be born who would affect the human race. Huge men of awesome size, speaking truth and smashing lies. Power Hour. Can dreams really come true? The Power Team is coming, and they're coming for you. Power Hour. Don't miss the Power Team. John Jacobson, the Power Team, November 14th through the 16th. Leon County Civic Center, 7 p.m. Admission is free. For more information, call 562-1065. What is that, sir? That, Charles, is my new Porsche 928 S4. Shall I have the chauffeur put it in the garage? Fire the chauffeur. South Carolina in need of a lot of help here. This one is way out of reach. 407 remaining, 59 nothing. Florida State. It is a misery index on the Gamecock sideline tonight. It hurts a little more when you're losing like this. And it feels a little better on the other side. The diehards remain. Carl Platt on the kickoff return. Had a seam up the middle and took it out to the 30-yard line. Saturday, ESPN, your home for college football. Beginning at 1130 a.m. Eastern with college game day. Tim Brando and Beano Cook for the most comprehensive hour in college football. At 430, it's game one of our doubleheader. Pittsburgh takes on Penn State. Now we know where we're going next Saturday night. Those Cowboys of Wyoming, number 10 in the nation, they can put some points yeah, on the board. Yeah. Randy Welniak and company down in Houston at the Dome. And those Cougars are going crazy as well. You got to calm yourself for this matchup, Ken. It's still a week away. You know, there was a game back in the early 70s or late 60s when uh, Wyoming played Houston in the Dome, and Houston just crushed Wyoming. I wonder, I'm wondering if they have played them since then. It's when they ran that beer option way back. Three and a half minutes remaining in this one. Out of bounds on the near side as Todd Ellis delivered it outside to Eddie Miller. Raiders and Chargers, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's tomorrow night as we continue our coverage of the NFL Live on Sunday nights. And Heisman Trophy winners galore. Marcus Allen, Timmy Brown, and Mr. Baseball, Bo Jackson. Yeah. Bo will be looking for a high inside win in that game, and he's liable to get it from San Diego's defense. Third and five at the 35. 323 remaining. South Carolina now with a mission. That is to avoid the shutout. And it looked like Todd Ellis was more interested in getting his body out of the way than standing and taking a licking. Anthony Moss was all over it. Give you an idea about the magnitude of this win for Florida State last year. Gamecocks allowed 151 points on the year. Tonight, 59 points in one game. Wow, it's incredible statistic. Nobody back to return this supposed kick. Good rotation on the spiral. And he gets a good bounce inside the 20, does Rodney Price. That's where Florida State will take over. To the sideline. Anybody still down there with you, Chris? <laughs> oh, a few folks, Bob. I'll tell you what, Bobby Bowden and Florida State would dearly love to play Notre Dame for the national championship. Something in their favor, Lou Holtz's son, Skip, is a graduate assistant. He works out with the receiver, so maybe he can exert some influence on his father. wonder what he thinks of Miss Betty's chicken fingers. We'll have to check into that. Get back to you later, guys. <laughs> Every time he comes on, I start to salivate. I think we're going to get something new on the menu. <laughs> well, I tell you, what a fine gentleman Bobby Bowden is. His team has more than 600 yards in total offense tonight. Bobby was just as relaxed as he could be in his hotel suite yesterday, getting ready for this one. 
First and 10 at the 15 as FSU behind quarterback Brad Johnson operates. 42 on the carry, and that is John Myrna. A senior out of Lanham, Maryland, listed as a defensive player. So he uh, gets to do something Kevin Kiley seldom got to do, and that's carry the football. Carried it on the scout team. I ran for over 60 yards one afternoon. It was a Wednesday, though. A Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> a Wednesday. <laughs> I like it. Second and seven at the 18. Ball carrier Keith Ross tripped up in the backfield on a good defensive play by Dave Durkin. So we've got 205 remaining in the game, and let's talk about our Casio player of the game tonight. Is there any doubt that it's Peter Tom Willis? Look at those numbers. 17 of 20, and we were we were discussing what the possibility was of him playing well tonight. That's 85%, partner. That's not bad. Third and six at the 19. Little fake, little sprint out, and a pass to the right side for Scott Damari, who has the first down. And uh, just as importantly for Bobby Bowden's uh, cause, he stays in bounds. As soon as they move the chains, that'll get the clock moving again. It sits at a minute 35. So we've got Pitt and Penn State for you next week on ESPN, Wyoming and Houston. The Cowboys and the Cougars beat their opponents today by a combined score of 117 to 21. We'll all have our track shoes on next Saturday night at the Astrodome. Little drop play. Keith Ross. I don't remember seeing a draw play tonight until that time. No, no, I was thinking the same thing. Or a screen from Florida State. And you would think a team that was a finesse team, you'd see a lot of that. But everything else worked so well. And really, you know, the other thing was they didn't really have long yardage either. They had, they didn't have too many plays where they were third and seven or second and eight or something like that where you would use it. Well, under a minute to go. Thursday night football will have Tim Brando and Stan White not far from us here. Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Bulldogs of South Carolina State against Eddie Robinson and the Grambling Tigers. They'll fake the reverse, and Keith Ross will keep it this time. He's down to the turf. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the game. And they'll move the chains and restart the clock with 26 seconds to go. Bobby Bowden, his counterpoint, Joe Morrison. Gamecocks will be 7-2. This will be their first loss of the season at home. Florida State will improve to 8-1 on the year. This one also snaps a 15-game home winning streak for the Gamecocks. Now, last loss was to Florida State. Yep, a couple of years ago. And that is it. It is over. 59-0. Kevin, what an effort by Florida State tonight. Florida State trying to get back to number one. Went a long way tonight. USC, great program. A lot of pride. They'll bounce back. Florida State wins it. Going away and away and away. 59 nothing here in Columbia. From about the 44-yard line and not the 42. Willis drops back. Blitz coming. Takes one time. Now drops back and throws the post. Deep. He's got a wide open receiver. Touchdown. Catch. Terry Anthony. Florida State birds the blitz with a post bomb, a 44-yarder from Peter Tom Willis. The Bobby Bowden Show is brought to you in part by Hardee's. In one of the finest displays of total domination in college football this season, Florida State rolls over the South Carolina Gamecocks 59 to nothing. Welcome to our program and Coach Bowden. Defense, offense, special teams, everything went together perfectly for the Seminole Center. Yeah, played one of the best ball games I bet, I bet Florida State has ever played in the history of their game. Uh, don't know how much because it's, it's uh, based on how good South Carolina played, but we were actually playing a football team that we thought might beat us up there. It was predicted to be a close, low-scoring type football game, right down to the wire perhaps. Jam-packed Williams-Brice Stadium, 75,000 on hand. Seminole's playing on the road. 
59 to nothing, the final score. A lot of highlights coming up, and Burt Reynolds and Vic Prenzi share a great moment in Florida State football. Stay with us as we enjoy Florida versus football. South Carolina Saturday night in Columbia, South Carolina. And, Coach, you were going into the ball game with a brand-new starting quarterback, Peter Tom Willis. A lot of Seminoles there. Yeah, we had our band, the Marching Chiefs, there. And time that I see them there, you get a good feeling you're going to win the football game because they give you such great inspiration. Our cheerleaders there did a great job. We had quite a big crowd there. Uh, a lot of mothers and fathers of our football players are there. We uh, win the toss, ask for the second half option. We kick off. Dedrick Dodge there makes the tackle. They fumble. We recover. It doesn't count because he was down. First play of the ball game, they throw the uh, open swinging gate play. There's 16. Tracy Sanders from Bradenton, Florida, making the tackle. They fumble the football here, and number 36, Kevin Smith from Jacksonville, Florida, recovers. And uh, that's the start, beginning of their troubles right here. Watch here. Uh, it's a bad exchange. Yeah, bad exchange, fumbled. We did the same thing the other night, by the way, on, on the play. And uh, Kevin Smith. Was, uh, and here comes uh, Chris Parker, a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. We start him in there at tailback. He did a real good job. But here's the play of the game right here. Peter Thomas shows you how strong his arm is there. He couldn't mm -hmm. follow through on his throw. But he hits Terry Anthony from Daytona Beach for a 44-yard touchdown pass. And a great play by our offensive team. The offensive line came together for the first time this year. Well, it, the first time they've been together, I guess you'd say. So they hold up. They, they, they hold pretty good, <laughs> period. <laughs> and uh, Pete, Peter Tom cuts a, a beauty uh, loose uh, down there. And Terry Anthony uh, tries to make a great catch out of it by bouncing yeah. it off his chest. <laughs> first, <laughs> first pass of the game by Peter Tom Willis, a touchdown for 44 yards. Quite a confidence builder. Yeah, that'll get you confidence pretty quick, won't it? And uh, he, he really did. Uh, J John Eason does a great job with our receivers. I thought it was very obvious. All, they all caught well. And here's a real fine uh, tackle on the kickoff. I see Corey Freeman, number 10, in on it. He didn't initiate it, but he's in on it. And uh, oh, a great play there by Odell Hagen. Number 53, watch him. He had the best game of his career. Watch him. Watch his hit. Now, it's a very dominating hit. Oh, now, he had the best game of his career. I thought that, look at this, Kevin Smith, he got around that ball a lot, too. Uh, Eric Hayes and Steve Gabbard, uh, boy, they, they, they played well. They're giving, and we, we used a three-man rush. There's old Stan Shiver from Tifton, Georgia, making his usual good plays. And here's, uh, we put a little sprint out in for them, and you had a great block by Dane Williams there, and his mom and dad was there from, from uh, Leesburg, Florida. Larry Moore was there. I saw him and some of, some of, some of his folks. I had to enjoy it. Oh, yeah, we had and a great throw there and a great catch by Ronnie Williams, who's from Jacksonville, Florida. Peter Tom Willis, uh, he calls Morris, uh, Alabama, his home. I call Birmingham, Alabama, his home. That's my home. <laughs> <laughs> we got, got advertised a little bit. Perfectly thrown pass. Yes, it really was. And here's, boy, well, he did a great job of this. Another catch by Terry Anthony. And old P Peter Tom's hot. And the offensive line is protecting so well. Now, that was, now they, you can't hold them out any longer than that, you know. Pete was still trying to get loose trying to get get loose to get that bomb off and and uh there's felton hayes from brandon florida uh bill reagan's from live oak florida and there's a block punt by phil corallo tony moss from miami florida fix it up john hadley from orlando howard dinkins from jacksonville florida all around the ball dodge from mulberry florida alfonso williams from lloyd <laughs> florida you didn't even have a block on did you no we did not uh, uh jim gladden who uh works with our punt team he said you know I think one of the best ways to block a punt against him is to make it like you're not going to block it and send somebody in. That's exactly what he did. Our coaches had several schemes for this game that they, they, they told me they were going to try to do, and I was amazed at how many of them worked. Just like the first touchdown that uh, Peter Tom threw, the name of that play was 60 Gamecock. The coaches had spotted something, uh, Wayne McDuffie and Mark Richt and, and, our coach, and John East and them, that they thought would score on them, and just like that punt there. There's Odell Higgins there making another great play at nose guard. Eric Hayes. Eric can run like a halfback now. Number 78 out there. Look at, look at Gabbert putting good pressure on. His mother and dad was there. Leroy Butler, another Jacksonville, Florida. Led by Deion Sanders. Look at Deion leading and blocking. And Odell downfield blocking. And Felton Hayes from Brandon, Florida down there blocking. And here comes Sammy Smith into the ball game. And uh, Sammy ran well for us again. We got He, he played. Uh, Dexter Carter played. Keith Ross played. We played for four tailbacks and i tell you they, they, their morale has been amazing too dane williams there again from leesburg making another fine play dane blocked well this game he and marion butts really gave us some good fullbacking and paul moore paul moore from miami florida played well marion butts of course is from sylvester georgia 
and they all have another year. Now, here's a great fake by Peter Tom, and he hits uh, uh, Brad... Uh, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts. Okay. Dave, Dave, want, who coaches him? Mr. Oh, Brad Scott. Brad. Okay, I call him Brad. <laughs> Okay, Pete, come out and hit, wide hit Dave Roberts from Griffin, Georgia. Reggie Johnson there from Pensacola, Florida, who played well and blocked well, and, he, and he's been injured. Tom O'Malley played well. I wonder if I've seen your tight end. The only tight end that we're going to lose is he played well, caught a pass. They try a little pass, but Corey Freeman from Jacksonville, Florida, harasses him, and uh, Dodge gets another interception. Dion again, leading and blocking. Dion's a team player. He's a team player. People see him a lot because he's so good. He's, he puts the team first. Peter Tom on a great fake and a nice catch by Terry Anthony again. Those guys made some great catches. Yeah, and here's a good, here's a good run by Butts. You're about a 40-yard run, which he gets all the way down to one and don't score. And I'm sure he's going to get kidded about that. <laughs> he is going to get kidded. He has 241 pounds now with a 40-yard head start, and he lets that guy get him on the one. But I can see why. I can see why. He, want, he was going to drive towards the goal line and get his pads down, and, of course, that momentum threw him right on the ground. And there's a touchdown by Marion Butts. He deserved it. Tony Yeoman's in there blocking. Uh, Kuyper's. Uh, Mike Tank's Michael in there Tanks in center, yes. First time in a month. First time in a month, exactly. And, of course, Pat Tomlin, who, who's just been a great part for the four years he's been here. And who am I leaving out? Gee, I hope I didn't leave anybody out. we got, we got Kuyper's and uh, Yeoman's. Yeoman's yeah. Yeah. Mike Marsh played good, too. Now, there was uh, Keith Carter from Miami, Florida, who played uh, real, made a good play there. He was being harassed by someone else. Uh, you see, Joey Ionata, that's who I left, name I left yeah. out. His mother and dad were at the ball game. And gee, we're going to miss the Ionatas. They've been with us for eight years. And here's uh, Dexter Carter making an outstanding play there, keeping a the drive going uh, from Baxley, Georgia there. And then Bill Mason comes in and kicks a field goal. And we take a 31 to nothing halftime lead. And I tell you, that, I, wish, I wish it was that easy coaching. I mean, you'd, you know, you could relax so much. Tim Corley is going to come talk to you on Monday morning or Tuesday morning and say, give me more playing time, Coach. That's the Seminole punter. He did not punt in the football game Saturday. 31 nothing at halftime, everything going Florida State's way. We still have some more exciting highlights from the second half. In between now, nearly flawless football in the first uh, 30 minutes of play. In the second half, more of the same, Coach, at yeah. Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, Keith Roth there returns the uh, opening kickoff there, the second half kickoff. We hand off to Dane Williams, taking it in there behind John Ionata and and Tony Yeoman from Jessup, Georgia, who's, uh, by the way, their parents were there at the football game. Peter Tom hits uh, uh, Lawrence Dawson there from Dalton, Alabama. And boy, Dalton, he, and, they, and I think we get tacked on a little temper there because a little uh, personal foul over on the sideline. Pat Tumlin played good uh, uh, at tackle again for Florida State University. Tom O'Malley in motion here. Look how Pete just laid the ball mm -hmm. in the lane there, you know. and you know, side arm. Yeah, he had, he had to get rid of the ball before the receiver got open. So Pete just threw it in there to a spot and let him run under. See, he, he had to get rid of the ball quick. Pete's wondering what's going to happen. But an excellent job. Of course, Dawsey. Dawsey knows where the goal yes, line is. is. That's what I like about him. Seven he knows touchdown. where that goal line is. Seven touchdown catches, my goodness. And 14 catches. Yeah. Well, big done. percent of a touchdown. Yeah, he, 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 he just got excellent time. Look, look at Gabbard. Gabbard has really come on number 76. Uh, you don't hear that much about Steve, but uh, he has played so well for us. And, his mother, mother and father were there at the ball game, by the way. I saw them after the game. Here's Dion. They, they had him defensed here. Uh, John Hadley had sense enough not to clip there. Here comes Peter Tom on one of our sprint outs. And uh, Chris Parker there. Look at that great catch. Watch this. Let's look short again here. This Bruce is Bruce Lussain. Lussain. I'm gonna look at Pete. Throws under duress. Watch this catch. That saved the first down. Bruce Lassane from Wildwood, Florida. The junior. Did, uh, did a great job there. That's Keith Jones' hometown, by the way. And he's... Steve Damari here from Miami, Florida, made a nice, not only a nice catch, but he had a run. Oh, my goodness. We needed 18 yards. He, he got six of it and came back. Look at Chris Parker here. Chris Parker, freshman from uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. He's in there. Fullback is Victor Floyd from Pensacola. Now, watch this catch by uh, Dawson. Is that Dawson again? Yeah, Lawrence yeah. Dawson. He's yeah. interfered with. The flag was thrown. Two people hit him, and he yeah. still held still, on to the football. He's got great concentration on the ball. He really does. He has great... He, but Pete gives him a chance to catch it, you know. Uh -huh. A lot of quarterbacks will throw that thing a mile over his head, and everybody say, ooh, you know. <laughs> but Pete gives him a shot at the doggone ball because he knows Dawson will go get it. And so, anyway. 45 nothing, 45 Coach. 45 nothing. Uh, you got to be feeling pretty good on the sideline about this. Yeah, look at, that, look at that. Brian Davis there from uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Lincoln High School. Lincoln High School. Steve Harden's High School. Look at that. Whoa. Real fine. Oh, what a fine hit. 
fine hit. Look at 93 there, Shelton Thompson from Lakeland. And uh, getting a good pass rush, Moss here. And uh, old Eric Hayes, he looks like the, looks like a, a little, looks like lost a dancing school. There, little, <laughs> little old narrow hips of his. Now he's lost that 305 pounds he came in with this year. And here's uh, reverse. Casey, Casey Weldon in there at quarterback. Oh, Dawson runs with, look at Economo, Nick Economo leading down there. And, and Haywood Haynes from, from uh, Bartow. Bartow, Florida. And Economo is from uh, is Melbourne. He? Melbourne, Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to help me out there. <laughs> Uh, well, here, here's uh, Dexter Carter there running the football. Picked up a beautiful block there by uh, Victor Floyd there at fullback. And uh, Casey on a, on a bootleg here. Casey's got the good speed. I, that, that young man's going to be a tough quarterback. One of these days. Because, he, because he's got something the others don't have. Great speed. That's his first rushing touchdown as a Seminole. That's Red his first practice. one. He's done that in practice quite a few times. But... Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with a quarterback like that because they got some movement, and uh, all these all, the, all these quarterbacks have got their strength. You know, I mean that, that all of them have their strength. Fifty-two to three. nothing. They used three in the ball game. Well, we sure did. And they all produced uh, uh, touchdowns. They fumbled the football there. Look, now there's uh, there's Joe Osters. Joe. Joe and Henry. They both played a lot, and and uh, Keith Ross there running the football. Now he's in there with Paul. You don't see a great runner, man. Watch Paul Morris. But here's Keith Ross again. Getting some good blocking, number 65 there, Haywood Ames. There's Brad Johnson yep. from uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. Now, his family's living down in Rome, Georgia now. Watch this run by Paul Moore, freshman fullback. Watch Paul. I mean, he just bulls himself in there. He's getting a little help in there. Boy, though Paul just, yep. watch him. He just, watch him now. Watch him. He drags Look here. Four, right, he gets hit right there. Now, watch. Picks up two more guys. Big hit, He'll right? charge him. He'll charge, that'll be charged fair, shouldn't he? Uh-huh. I mean, he cares about three of them in the end zone. Great job, and, uh, and uh, Richie Andrews uh, kicks the extra point. His, his dad was there at the football game. Came out and worked out with us tonight before the ball game. There's Bill Smith, our, uh, uh, who's been with us for 20-something years at Florida State. He, he's the only guy that runs on the field the same pace I do, which is slow. <laughs> but anyway, it was a great win for Florida State. 59 to nothing, the Seminoles win their eighth consecutive ball game, and that's the second longest win streak, Coach, in your 13 years here at Florida State. Congratulations.